Hello, my name is Jorge Soberon. Uh, we are going to discuss today uh, part of the theoretical issues related to modeling distributions. Uh, there is a basic question in which we are interested, and that question is to find out the areas of distribution of species. As you all know, this is important for fundamental reasons of ecology, biogeography, uh, macroecology, but also it's very important uh, and has a lot of implications from a perspective of applications like invasive species, like uh, vectors of diseases, like conservation biology, and many others. Uh, so we want to model the areas of distribution of species, and not just model them uh, without any reference to their biological properties. It is surprising, but you can do it. You can do the models without any reference to the biology of a species. We want to involve the biology of the species. And the way of modeling that we're going to use is called uh, niche modeling because it's based on the relations between the environments where the species live or can potentially live and what we observe in the field. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do in this brief uh, um, video is to discuss the main ideas on, and the main types of things that you can model. It's up to you to decide whether you are going to model a potential area of distribution or uh, an actual occupied area or the niches of those different concepts and we're going to discuss that. To do that, uh, to discuss that thing, the first uh, we're going to do is to, to, to use a diagram which is an abstract concept of geographical space. Uh, I'm going to draw a box, I'm going to call it G, that is like the reference area where you are working. It is very important to be uh, conscientious about it, to, to state explicitly where are you, uh, um, what's, the, what's the reference of your, of your, the universe of your, of your research or your problem. People ignore that part to their peril. Inside that geography, there are many kinds of, of areas. This is an abstract representation and I'm going to draw the concrete representation immediately. The first thing we would like to know is uh, what region in this geography is suitable for the species in terms of uh, conditions, uh, the limits of tolerance to things like temperature, precipitation, uh, radiation, if you are living up in high in the mountains, perhaps uh, there is too much UV radiation. Uh, there are things that are physical and that tend to be uh, represented as limits within which a species can basically survive. And we're going to draw that uh, as a circle and for historical reasons it is going to be called the A circle. The A circle is, uh, the, a circle is the abiotic conditions circle. So, what happens inside the circle. Wherever you are in geography, inside the circle, the abiotic conditions are favorable for your species. What, what are conditions? I'm going to give a few examples. I mentioned a few already. Temperature, extremes of temperature, coldest temperature, the, the, the warmest temperature of the hottest month, uh, precipitation, extremes of dryness, seasonality and precipitation, that kind of thing are, are the variables that compose the A circle. Now, obviously a species cannot survive just by tolerating uh, conditions. Uh, any species would require also to have resources, food, things like that, and also things like uh, be able to escape from predators or uh, not being, uh, being um, infected with diseases or being capable of outcompete competitors. So I'm going to draw another circle and I'm going to use a different pole. This circle represents the regions in the planet where the conditions are satisfactory for your species but in terms of interactions, competitors, predators, parasites, diseases, resources that are consumed 
like for example, perhaps your, your, your species of bird, which is consuming seeds, and it requires seeds of certain sizes as well. These things go to the bee uh, circle. It's called the biotic variable circle. This is stressing terminology a bit. Not necessarily all the, these conditions are um, physical. There may be some biotic conditions here, and vice versa here. But let's just assume it for, for sake of simplicity. So, what happens in the area where the two regions intersect? Well, these are regions in the planet which are favorable for your species, both from the perspective of uh, conditions and also from the perspective of resources and biotic interactions. Finally, there is a third and extremely important, often forgotten area. red circle, and this is called the movement area, or the dispersal area. Uh, your species originated in some part of the world, and since the moment that it was capable of being distinguished as a different species, started moving and spreading. But that, that has, for practically every species in the world, some limits. So, uh, for example, it may have found a barrier or perhaps that just doesn't have had the time to, to disperse all over the world. Uh, for example, species that are just spreading after glaciation, maybe uh, tree species, maybe quite behind the areas where they can actually occupy. Because, because they are still in the active phase of spreading, they are out of equilibrium. So the intersection of the three circles produce the first area distribution that people uh, normally uh, care to try to model. And I'm going to call this region here. GO, meaning the occupied, the occupied area of the species. This is uh, a very clear uh, and very intuitive area of distribution. Uh, there, there are still caveats, and I'm not going to, into these caveats. For example, you may probably be interested in areas where the species is uh, reproductive. S species with migratory patterns complicate this scheme very much. But again, let's, let's keep it simple. So this is an area which we would be very interested in more. But there is another area which is also quite interesting. This region here, which I'm going to mark slightly uh, isolated triangle. This is an area which has the right abiotic conditions and the right biotic conditions, but is not occupied by the species. Why not? Because the species have not had the time to get there. And this is also an interesting area. So we're going to give it name. This is the area that can be invaded by the species. And this is an area which is also very, uh, I mean, it's important to be able to model that. So when we go back to our first question, first question to remember is how do we model areas of distribution? First thing you have to be clear about is whether you are modeling this one or this one, or perhaps you are modeling both of them. 